On today's show, Viking quarterback Christian Ponder wears number seven. It's a good number if you're thinking of luck on a fishing trip. We'll find out if the Viking QB can land the big one. Oh, he's got another one. Oh. It's called a sit on top kayak. Ever thought about getting started with something in the great outdoors but didn't know where to start? Laura Shera lends a hand as she's starting with the sport of kayaking. It'd be about eight, nine minutes aside. And we're going wild in the kitchen with Laura, along with Chef Paul Lynch, as they head to the grill to cook up a little quail. That is a caterpillar. Our Minnesota Bound Classic this week is one of my favorite haunts at the State Fair. Yes, the Butterfly House. So colorful, so dainty, so fascinating. Those stories and more next. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Hi, everybody. Raven and I welcome you to the show. And as you can see, daughter Laura has joined us today. Laura, are you here to clean my boat? Uh, no, Dad. I'm here to take it out. So let's move this along. <laughs> okay. Well, our first story is very interesting because it's about somebody everybody knows here in Minnesota. He is the quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings, Christian Ponder. We took a little fishing trip. He challenged me to a contest. I let's, think you won. Let's see who won. <laughs> Minnesota Viking quarterback Christian Ponder wears number seven, a digit fame for bringing luck. But one day on a fishing trip down the Zumbro River, there was Christian, but no number seven in sight. I'm ready. I'm ready. Huh? I'm ready to get out here. I'm ready to show Ron up. Really? Who's a better fisherman out oh, here? Really? <laughs> You're gonna start that right away. I huh? am. We got a hundred dollars on the most fish. Is that what <laughs> okay, a little pre-game trash talk from a quarterback turned angler, but he's called the right play: a river float trip with canoe man Bill Planton. While Christian is casting, uh, somebody else is catching. There you go. Ooh, it's a big one. It's a big northern. Hey, there he is. You want to pay me now or pay me later? I'll write you a check later. <laughs> <laughs> Woo hoo! Okay, the Viking fishing team is off to a slow start, but wait, is the quarterback calling a trick play? Hey, Christian. I'm not talking to you. Hey, Christian. I don't hear you. The score is two to nothing. Okay, Packer Backers, a bit of advice. Never rile a quarterback who wears the number seven. Yeah, little guy. First fish of the day. I'm not gonna brag about that one. But it is now two to one. He counts, it's a fish. Clearly, Christian Ponder takes his fishing seriously. It is a passion. Uh, you know, I started off real little. Uh, my, my grandfather's the one that really got me into fishing, and you know, he always called me his fishing buddy. So uh, I always loved it. I mean, I think I started around when I was five, and uh, you know, we'd spend a week or two out in Florida during the summer, and, and I'd spend all day fishing on the lake by myself, and I loved it. Got a fish. This Viking oh, yeah. QB was getting hot. Yeah. What you got, Christian? A white bass. Does that one count, Ron? Yeah. Fish. Oh, hey, cute. the game ain't over. Christian! Woohoo! What'd you get? I got a game fish. <laughs> Look at here, boys. At halftime, guide Bill Planton laid out a tasty lunch. And Christian talked fishing. You know, actually, this is my first Minnesota fishing experience. I knew that walleye was big up here, and uh, my grandfather had always shared his, his experiences with walleye fishing, and all, it was something I always wanted to do. When the second half started, the Viking QB had a new game plan. See the difference between a smallmouth and a largemouth? Yeah. The QB is on a roll. Better size one. Better size one. Oh, he's got another one. Oh, oh there we go. <laughs> That's probably the same fish. 
you know, after a, a pretty rough year this past year, I think, you know, people need to know that, you know, I'm a hard worker and, and I'm, I'm a real competitor, whether it's, you know, making sure that we don't go 3-13 and 13 again while I'm here and having a better year this next year and, or whether it's mesh, catching more fish than Ron Shera on this beautiful river today. Hey ref, where's the replay? Where's the replay? It's four pounder. <laughs> Minnesota is the perfect place to kayak. So what are you waiting for? Laura has some tips on how to get started. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Minnesota's select GMC dealers. Connecticut. Game Fair. And by Rapala. The GMC Terrain. Color touch sound system. Bluetooth connectivity. Call Jen. This is smart. OnStar app ready. The 2013 GMC Terrain. Over 100 standard features that make you more capable. That's professional grade. Lease this 2013 Terrain with an EPA estimated 32 highway NPG for around $199 per month. Back to the show. You know, many of us are interested in starting something new in the outdoors, but we're not quite sure how. Well, here's our new segment called Getting Started, and I recently went kayaking. Kayaking. It's a great way to work out, enjoy the sun, and take in nature's beauty all on the water. And Minnesota being the land of 10,000 lakes means, well, you have about 10,000 places to give this outdoor activity a try. But how do I get started? Hi, Andrew. Hi, Laura. What brings you to Joe's today? I am ready to do some kayaking. So what types of things should I consider when I'm ready to purchase a kayak? Well, the biggest one that you're going to want to know is what type of body or bodies of water that you're going to be in. A lot of kayaks are designed and built with different specs so that they can handle different types of waters from lakes, rivers, large bodies like Lake Superior. So there's a few different I have in mind here to try and show you, see if we can't figure out which one exactly is the right one for you. Well, this is the first selection of boat I have for you. It's called a sit on top kayak, mainly because you sit on top of it instead of inside like you mostly see. It's nice and easy to balance on. You can fall off, go for a swim, climb back up on the boat because since there's nowhere for the water to go inside, you'll always be able to climb back on board and have the boat float for you. This is from Wilderness Systems. It's called a touring kayak. What makes this boat unique is that it's longer and straighter than most of the other ones out there, which allows it to have a nice straight track. The problem is with fiberglass is it's a little weaker of a material. It's far lighter, but you need to be much more careful. You wouldn't want to run this up on beaches, or if you take it to a river, you certainly wouldn't want to bang it up against a bunch of rocks. So this seems like it might be maybe just too advanced considering I'm a beginner. It may be at this point because it'll take a little bit longer to get used to versus something that may be more in the middle. This one's from Dagger. It's kind of built out to be a little bit of every kayak for nearly every type of waterway. A couple of the key features with this boat, like the fiberglass one, it does have at least one bulkhead so you can keep your things dry. It shares the same seat design, so there's a lot of adjustment to it to make sure that it stays comfortable for you while you're on the water. With these ones, they're made out of a material called polyethylene. The boats are nearly indestructible. This type of kayak, you can bang up on anything you want, drag it on the beach, drop it off the car, whatever you want to do to it, it'll absorb that damage really well. Um, this sounds about right for me. I can imagine it now, paddling along on a Sunday afternoon. I'm just curious on how I'm going to paddle it. Am I going to do a doggy paddle here with my hand? Well, you can if you want to, but unfortunately, you're not really going to get very far. So this is a great starting paddle right here for kayaking. This is an aluminum shaft plastic blade. A couple other options that we have here. One of them is going to be the next upgrade, which is a fiberglass shaft. This one here is for your touring boats. It's a carbon fiber build, a composite blade. Oh, this is very lightweight. It's very lightweight, and unfortunately, it's also very expensive, too. About three times as much as that fiberglass paddle that you have in your hand. I think I'll take option number two. Okay, perfect. Well, we're two-thirds there. The last thing that we need to look at before you're ready for the water is going to be life jackets. Fits pretty good. Excellent. Now I have the boat, the paddle, and the life jacket. Is there anything else I need? Well, in Minnesota, the last thing that we need is going to be a license. Minnesota DNR states that any boat over nine feet long does need to be registered. Perfect, I'm ready. Excellent. So unload it off the truck. That's your job, right? Oh. 
When we're starting here, you want to keep your center of gravity low. Grab onto the gunnel right here and keep yourself centered right in the middle of the boat as you kind of slide into the seat. There are a couple different types of paddling that you can be doing. One is a little shallow draw where the paddle blade just dips into the water, pushes forward. The other type of paddling there is is a little more of a higher stroke. The paddle goes right along the side of the boat and gives you as much oomph per stride as possible. All right, Andrew, less talk, more paddling. It was a windy day on Calhoun, but with Andrew's guidance and the right equipment, the day was a breeze. Well, that wraps it up for today. And if you're not quite ready to invest in a kayak, you're in luck because right here on Lake Calhoun, you can rent one. You gotta get started somewhere, but most important, just get outside. Don't let wild game like quail intimidate you. Laura Shera takes us step by step through this summer recipe. Closed captioning is brought to you by By the Yard, premier manufacturers of maintenance free outdoor patio furniture and accessories from recycled plastic. Yard maintenance free furniture. Comfort, elegance, and recycling combined. Call today for your free catalog or go online to buytheyard.net. Coming up, it's time to go wild in the kitchen. Laura Shera has a special recipe. Quail and wild rice. Sounds pretty good, huh? Hey, thanks, Dad. Well, today we're getting wild in the outdoor kitchen, as I'm here with Chef Paul Lynch with Fire Lake Grill House and Cocktail Bar. And, Paul, I understand we are uniquely prepping a quail bird today to throw on the grill. Is that correct? That is correct. A couple of mistakes that hunters make is, number one, they don't pull the feathers, they pull the skin. Skin is fantastic with birds. But now that we're talking about quails, the technique we're gonna talk talk about today, which is called spatchcocking. And spatch that sounds a little difficult. Yeah, but it's also not a dirty word. Spatchcocking <laughs> is a word we all should learn to love. So all I did was prepare a brine with sugar, salt, and pickling spice. We just take our knife, take it right through the cavity on one side of the backbone. And now we're gonna go down the other side of it. Now what that does is we have that backbone that's pulled out and see how the bird already starts to open up? Mark that cartilage and then pack it open. So do we need to season the birds before they go on the grill? Yes, I have a fantastic rub. So we have a little bit of mayonnaise, a little bit of Swedish mustard, a little bit of lemon juice. We have tarragon and we have chives. Drizzle sure. this in. What we're gonna want, I'm trying to do is to make sure it doesn't break. So just drizzle it in there. And we're gonna sprinkle them first with a little bit of black pepper, and I like kosher salt. With the quails, I'm gonna go ahead and marinate those up right now. And this is such an easy process, so you could do this with not only, obviously, quail, but as big as a turkey. Literally any bird, this is a fantastic, one of the best techniques. So let's go ahead and grab those and head on out to the grill. All right. And we're gonna start off with the skin up. For the quail, it's gonna be about four to five minutes per side. Game hen or a pheasant, it'd probably be about eight, nine minutes a side. And now we are making some delicious summer succotash. I can smell the bacon sizzling already. All right, the quail is fresh off the grill. And the succotash is ready. And we are ready for the perfect summer meal. We're gonna just take some of our great succotash here, put that on the plate. A gorgeous, crispy quail. And there you go. There's a midsummer night dream. That is definitely wildly delicious. I'm Rob Dreesline, Managing Editor of the Outdoor News Publications. The region's waterfall hunters received some good news last month 
when they learned that duck and goose numbers across the middle portion of the nation remained stable despite a slight decline from last year. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service released its annual waterfall breeding and population habitat survey last month and the results bode well for hunting this fall. Conducted each May by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the Canadian Wildlife Service, the survey puts the continent's 2013 duck population at 45.6 million birds. That represents a 6% decline from 2012, but last year was an all-time record, so overall numbers remain 33% above the long-term average. Though most species declined slightly, including mallards, which were down 2%, other species were up. Widgeon, for example, climbed 23%, and canvasback, a favorite of Mississippi River bottomland hunters like myself, were at a near record high. Scop, unfortunately, showed a 20% decline from last year, and as a result, hunters could see tighter regulations for bluebills this fall. Now, as for Canada geese, the Department of Natural Resources estimates there are 250,000 honkers in Minnesota compared to 416,000 last year. Biologists attribute much of that drop to extremely wet weather in the state that may have flooded goose nesting grounds this past spring. Despite the decline, the DNR says goose numbers remain higher than the agency would like, so the state will hold an ultra-early season for geese this month in west-central Minnesota. The summer season runs August 10th to 25th. Hunters not only will be targeting geese during hot weather, but the anticipated September 21st duck opener will be the earliest in modern history. Youth Waterfall Day will fall on September 7th. And one final note, if you like liberal duck seasons, the feds have approved increasing possession limits from two times the daily limit to three times effective this fall for all migratory birds. Minnesota is expected to make the change, and that means hunters would be allowed a possession limit of 18 ducks. For complete information on how this fall's waterfall hunting season unfolds, check out the print edition of Outdoor News or view us online at OutdoorNews.com. I'm Rob Teresla. Mine's been here then. Still ahead, a Minnesota-bound classic and a state fair favorite, the Butterfly House. Watch your step. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Hennepin County Medical Center. Minnesota Agricultural Water Resources Coalition. Minnesota Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. You know, for me, there's no better way to spend the summer than be on a Minnesota lake or river. But now, thanks to Hennepin County Medical Center, you've got a way to make sure your day outdoors is time well spent. HCMC shares our passion for the outdoors, which is why they put together a website filled with safety tips and videos to help you plan and be prepared. And it's right at your fingertips at home or on the go. Simply visit hcmc.org outdoors and get the most out of your summer. Everybody in Minnesota knows the State Fair is coming, so here's a story about one of my favorite places to visit. If you like butterflies, you'll love a house full of them. That is a caterpillar, and it's going to turn into a cecropia moth. Well, this is the uh, 15th year of butterflies at the Minnesota State Fair. We bring them in from Costa Rica, Tanzania, Panama, Honduras, the Philippines. About 210,000 people a year will either walk by, stop, or come into the Butterfly House, making it one of the most popular attractions at the fair. I started raising butterflies about 20 years ago full time from my family's Christmas tree farm up in the St. Croix Valley. We used a chemical that killed everything but the Christmas trees and milkweed. So we started to sell the monarchs in the back of catalogs. And the business eventually just went crazy and we started doing Butterfly houses. What he's doing right now is he is attaching the pupa of the giant owl butterfly from Costa Rica, which looks exactly like a leaf, but it's not. They actually move. They move to uh, try to shake off a parasite, or if there's a lizard or something like that trying to get them. Here you can actually see the butterflies hatching out. They go from chrysalid to butterfly after they've been glued onto these rags. The whole process, once they start to emerge, takes about two hours. Butterflies on his foot, and it's been there for like the whole time. Mine's been here the entire time. Even if I do this, he never goes away. I accidentally spilled Coca Cola on my arm, so all of the butterflies are landing here to lick it off. 
I come here every year because this is the best place. Usually when there's not a lot of people, you can just sit down. Butterflies will land on you. The appeal of butterflies is pretty universal. Everyone understands that they're very fragile, very delicate. They do get some handling in there, and we pick butterflies that can be handled. The largest wingspan is that of the atlas moth. The atlas moth has the largest wingspan of any butterfly or moth in the world. They get to be about 14 inches across. And here we have everybody's favorite, the monarch. That's a morpho, considered by many the most beautiful butterfly in the world. If people really get excited, we have butterflies inside that we do sell. This is what started it all. This is a monarch caterpillar, and then about 10 days it'll be a, uh, a butterfly, and it will migrate to Mexico. And it's a pretty cool thing. We sell them in the exhibit. People can come here and buy them and bring them home. They're a pollinator. They're out there in nature. They're flying around. They help convert carbohydrates into protein, so they're a valuable part of the food chain. I don't know of anybody who doesn't like butterflies. It only brings joy and beauty to everyone. Pretty butterflies. Now, Laura, you've never liked bugs. What about butterflies? Well, butterflies are a different category than spiders, I think. <laughs> Very good. Well, that about does it for us. Remember, introduce a kid to the great outdoors. I'm Ron Chera, and of course, the star of the show is Raven, or is it Laura? Now, wait a minute. <laughs> Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. For more information on these stories and more, catch us on the web at mnbound.com.